So in this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, we're going to be mixing gravel, sand, and two-part epoxy that was donated to me by one of my fans. What are we going to try and make? We're going to attempt to do what's called epoxy granite, which is a way of dampening objects on a machine using the three said material. So let's talk about it. So credit for this recipe goes to Bob over at cnccookbook.com. He did, and I'm approximating the values here by weight, 60% gravel, about 25% sand, and about 15% epoxy resin. Now the concept behind this is when you mix all three together you create a aggregate or a composite material that has good dampening properties for vibration and also adds mass to a machine while being, being relatively cheap. Now the most expensive material in all of this is the epoxy. Each bag of probably easily, oh, 25, 30 pounds at least of sand and gravel. Ran me no more than about six bucks a bag, while the epoxy here ran me, oh gosh, actually ran my friend who bought it for me, I think about 25 or 30 bucks, I'm guessing, for um, a total of 16 fluid ounces when combined of epoxy resin. So my hope is that we're going to have enough to fill in this tray here, which is for the base of my CNC machine. It's a spacer. The reason why I'm doing this before I do the actual machine is just in case anything goes wrong. I don't want to screw up anything on the machine. If it works good here, then we're also going to do the Z-axis on the machine. And then we're going to conclude with the Y-axis, which really could probably use some strengthening because you'll see that thing does not have a lot of material in it to make it stiff. So let me get the mixture ready and then we'll go ahead and mix it up and put the first batch in here and cross our fingers and hope everything goes okay. Okay, so I'm pretty darn sure that I've got good quantities of both. I really don't know how accurate my mix ratios are, but you know what? I don't think this is going to be super critical. Obviously, we can adjust as necessary later on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mix up the gravel and the sand, and then we're going to mix in the epoxy resin. And then that starts about our 60-minute countdown timer according to the resin, as it takes about that long for it to do all of its resiny magic. So let's get mixing. You know what? I'm going to take the calculated gamble here and I'm going to say that I don't think I have enough epoxy in here. Personally, I don't care if there's a little too much epoxy. I'd much rather have that than not enough epoxy and then this thing's just like a giant crumbly mess of rocks and stuff. So I'm just going to quickly mix up the last of the epoxy that's in the container. I'm gonna pour it in here and try and level it as best as I can. This stuff is super thick, like I said, so it makes it a little bit tricky to work with, but 
I am getting good epoxy coverage in here, but I just, I just don't trust it because this stuff is definitely not like what Bob used, which I get the idea was very watery stuff. So yeah, we'll see. Hey everyone, so it's the next day. Today's actually July 4th. Um, so happy Independence Day to everybody in the USA. But in short, what I did over yesterday was I felt like the epoxy that I was using just wasn't enough to provide a good strong bond. So I ran to the local Lowe's and picked up some of this stuff, Bondo fiberglass resin and it works pretty good, except for the fact that I forgot that this stuff is crazy moisture sensitive. And it kind of turns out that the sand in the bag comes wet, so I'll leave the rest to your imagination in that department. So that combined with cold overnight temperatures, and it's pretty overcast out here in San Francisco today, pretty much means that the epoxy didn't set overnight, which is a little bit of a bummer because it claims it's sandable within two hours, blah, blah, blah. And it does set pretty darn fast if it's not exposed to moisture. So Curtis over at Lucky 13 Vinyl had a good suggestion. He said, leave it out in the sun. Well, it's about 9.30, 10 in the morning right now and there ain't no sun. I think it's gonna be pretty overcast today. So to kind of kickstart the whole recurring process. I literally sat out here for like half an hour with my heat gun just warming everything up and I think it's made a big difference. I'll come back later and warm it up some more. I just want to let the heat kind of soak into everything and let some of the reaction go down then reheat it to kick start it off again and that whole deal. So that's the main reason why I intentionally chose to do the epoxy work on something non-critical such as this so that way I could learn from my mistakes such as that. Um, for the next one I'm probably going to use fiberglass resin. The only problem with this stuff is the mixing ratio for the hardener. It's kind of annoying. It's drops per fluid ounce so I'm probably going to find some stuff that's like a two to one mixing ratio or something a bit, something a bit easier like that. We'll We'll see there. I just grabbed that stuff because it was close and it was only like $14 for the can. So it was, it was very fairly priced for what it is. So in the meantime, I'm going to work on drying out the sand for the Z and the Y column and figuring out a more accurate mixing ratio method because the method that I used didn't really work like it was supposed to. The other thing I will say is don't try and mix up epoxy granite in all one giant batch. That was just stupid on my part. I really should have just done it as small batches, you know, mix a small batch. If it doesn't go right, you didn't lose a whole lot. Just let it kick off. Definitely do it outside if you're going to be using any kind of resin that smells really bad, such as fiberglassing resins. I mean, this stuff smells rank, and I'm doing it outside with good ventilation, and even then I'm like, oh man, this smells bad. And lastly, make sure everything's clean and dry, and if you're not sure, read the directions. So I'll let you guys on this probably one or two more times, and then when this is done, um, hopefully I'll be done machining critical stuff on the CNC machine, and I'll have time to at least tear the Z-axis off and kind of work on bracing that whole deal up. I might look into doing the um, spindle head assembly, but I'm really not not too confident on doing that just because I don't want to screw anything up on that, so I probably won't. But the Y-axis assembly, when we come to that one, you'll understand why I wanted to do it on there. The main reason why I want to do it on the Z-axis is, even if I don't fill it up all the way, I just want to put some kind of 
stiffness in there because I feel like the more vibration dampening stuff that's in there, the better it'll work. So I'll see you guys back in a couple of hours on this one. And yeah, so far, not a complete disaster. Look at that. It's like a giant nasty mud pie. Oh man, that thing's heavy.